Good morning. I'm Kimberly McQuarrie, the Director of Community Programming and Co-Director of the Innovation Labs at the Dali Museum. I'd like to thank you for joining us for this live streaming of our Coffee with a Curator series. Today we're joined by Allison McCarthy of the Dali for a special talk highlighting that amazing St. Pete tradition, the Shine Mural Festival. But before we get to the talk, please join me in thanking the City of St. Petersburg for their continued sponsorship of this series. And, of course, a special thanks to our members who make events like this possible. Please visit our website at thedali.org for more information about online activities and programming, including this month of November, a watch party of Vincent and Theo, our Poetry at the Dali series, and a live painting from Michael Knapp, the artist in residence from Mosey. And of course, please join us for next month's Coffee with Curator, which will feature Peter Tush discussing Dali's holiday cards. Now, for today's talk, I'm very pleased to be able to introduce my colleague, Allison McCarthy, Executive Assistant and Assistant Curator at the Dali. With an educational background in historic preservation and art history, Allison has served in a variety of positions that focus on art and culture, including Executive Director of the Clearwater Arts Alliance, Visual Arts Director at the Center for Contemporary Art in Santa Fe, and Arts Administrator for the Florida Department of State, among others. Currently, in addition to working here at the Dali, Allison is also a member of the Steering Committee for the Shine Mural Festival, and is here today to discuss that annual St. Pete tradition within the context of the power of public art. So I'd like to please introduce Allison McCarthy for her talk, Sunshine and Seawalls, the Shine Mural Festival 2020. Thank you, Kim. Good morning, everyone. I'm pleased to be here to speak about one of my favorite parts of living in St. Petersburg, which is the Shine Mural Festival. This is the sixth annual year, and it looks a little bit different as everything does this year. So let's dive into uh, my presentation here. What is Shine? The Shine Mural Festival is St. Petersburg St. Petersburg Walkable Urban Gallery. It's a week-long festival held each fall and generally centered around the downtown area. Led by local artists and community members, Shine is a project intended to illuminate the power of art in public spaces by revitalizing certain areas of St. Petersburg while cultivating new standards of artistic excellence and really reflecting St. Petersburg's creative spirit. During Shine, local artists are included with internationally acclaimed mural artists who leave behind the best of their work. An added bonus is that during the other 11 months of the year, our local artists who participate benefit as local businesses employ them and showcase their art. Fun fact, there are almost 600 murals in St. Petersburg, 93 of which are Shine murals. There will be 104 after this year's festival. Shine is a program within the St. Petersburg Arts Alliance, which is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to raising money and advocating for our entire creative community, artists, arts, and cultural organizations, and creative businesses. John Collins is the executive director, and Janae Preby is the associate director uh, and runs the Shine Mural Office. She produces the um, mural festival every year and is just a rock star. Um, so following this year, uh, this year's festival, there will be uh, a total of 104 world-class murals, artists from 15 countries, 13 community projects, 90 local artists who have been engaged in Shine, and a total of 135 artists between 2015 and 2020. Let's talk briefly about the economic impact of Shine. Uh, last year, as a part of the sponsorship from Visit St. Pete Clearwater, they led an economic impact study for the 2019 Shine Mural Festival which showed that 10,000 people attended in person. 
the festival. 66, excuse me, 68.6 attendees visited from outside Pinellas County. Almost 5% of those visited from outside the United States. Uh, and of those 55.6 total visitors, they're Florida residents, and the others came from New York, Illinois, Georgia, California. Last year, um, Shine generated 18 and a half million media impressions that we know of. Job supported, 21 jobs, 71,000 in tax gen taxes generated for Pinellas County, 858 hotel room nights, uh, all for a total economic impact of over $2 million for one week. And that doesn't count the economic impact that that happens then year round when people come um, and make shine murals as part of their, their destination and when they visit at St. Pete. They come to the Dolly, they hit the beaches, they, all, they do the mural tours. It's part of the St. Pete experience. <clears throat> the history of shine. <laughs> as many of you remember, about 10 years ago, Central Avenue had abundant, affordable storefronts um, that allowed for artists to set up small galleries. Behind their shops, gallery owners and other artists began painting the backs of these buildings. What began in 2012 around there as a small collection of alley-facing murals in St. Pete's infamous 600 block started an artistic movement which has led to something of an art renaissance in our city, which not only fuels our identity, but also inspires and engages our youth and stimulates our local economy. This is a photo of one of the early galleries owned by Chad Mize. This is the legendary Blue Lucy Gallery around 2014. Looked at that packed gallery. Boy, do I miss that kind of evening. <laughs> and here we have one of the earliest murals in that, the back of the 600 block. This is um, a mural, uh, really a community celebration um, organized by Derek Donnelly, who is in the middle with the black shirt. Uh, in remembrance of this pioneer of, of the local art scene named Bill Wu Corriera, who um, passed away in his gallery at age 43 um, after fighting brain cancer for five years. And really, there was this outpouring of love um, from the St. Pete arts community for Wu, as he was known, who had a gallery on the block. Wu was a catalyst in igniting the downtown art scene as a prolific fine artist and mentor to young artists who would then become some of our city's most prolific muralists, such as Derek Donnelly. And this is the back of the alleyway of 600 block Central Avenue today. I took this photo yesterday morning. Uh, you can see it's just all the way down. Every single surface is painted. It's, um, it's wonderful. And I'm gonna show you some details of these murals. This is the iconic Twiggy mural by Chad Mize in the back of his Blue Lucy Gallery, which has endured uh, over the last six, seven years since he's painted it. It's really lasted nicely. Next to it is Mr. Sun. It's an iconic uh, St. Pete image. Here are two murals, Derek Donnelly and Jennifer Kosharik. And here I wanted to show this close-up of this Frida mural to highlight the impact that the paintings have in diminishing the appearance of urban decay. One really must get up close to see these grittier details that are made visually appealing through color and shape and subject matter. Um, so let's talk about some of the existing Shine murals um, from festivals past. I'm gonna show you some of my favorites over the past five years. This is Ricky Watts. This is really um, a gorgeous mural. Many people miss this one because it's located on First Avenue North and traffic races past it rather than you, can't, you don't see it coming on. Uh, it's called Eye of the Storm. It took 10 days to create 500 cans of aerosol paint. And it's named Eye of the Storm because uh, it commemorates a hurricane scare right before the Shine Festival in 2016. I think that was Hurricane Matthew. This is one of my favorites. This is on the side of the U-Haul building. And I love this because it's done as part of a series um, by this artist named Hitness, who is, um, he is a German artist. And he um, is retracing the steps of bio biologist John James Audubon and painting local birds in different US states. Um, the mural looks like a painted illustration and an Audubon guide. Uh, and before doing this mural, the artist spent time in the Everglades observing these roseated spoonbills in the wild. 
This is Pantonio, he's Portuguese. And this is not only a gorgeous mural, but it's astounding to me because it was hand painted with brushes. There are no spray cans involved. Um, it's just beautiful and it's on uh, 1950 First Avenue North on the sort of back side of the building. This is Pixel Pancho. This mural by the Italian artist is, um, it's a commentary on the Monsanto Agricultural Corporation's patents on genetically modified seeds and corporate ownerships of the global food supply. Um, this took a team of artists to help him complete in 10 days, uh, also hand painted using brushes and rollers. And I see, what I, when I look at this, I see um, sort of a riff on the American Gothic um, painting by Grant Wood. This I love. This is I, I love this one because it's, I sh it, it's the interplay between the urban landscape. You're seeing the backsides of buildings, the pipes, the wires, and then you've got this luscious, juicy fruit that pops so well against that gray. Um, this is Angela Faustina, who grew up in South Florida and is now based in Atlanta. This is Mark Gemelling, who is a German artist. Uh, this is a Pinocchio, and the puppet's body is a burnt match stick, the head round and black and the body long and narrow. The skin of the doll is grainy wood and uh, dark brown with lighter swirls and streaks. Mark Gmelling said, um, basically, the body is the burnt match stick, and he's burned out, ashamed, and asking himself, what is going on in this world? This is 2016. This is one from last year that is just amazing. This is Shock One, who is really just an OG um, street artist from London, and he's been around forever, and it's amazing that we got him here. He, um, this is a, a hand puppet of a dog's skull, and that's his wife's hands in the front. And the, um, the shadow, in part, is a photorealistic x-ray of a dog's skull with the bones and teeth clearly defined. He, um, the artist has a degree in biochemistry. Um, he acquires actual x-rays from friends in the medical field and takes great care to make his paintings accurate uh, because his, his online followers, like especially those from the medical community, critique the precision of his painted bones. For this mural, he examined more than 150 x-rays and found the perfect one to paint for shine. And this is on First Avenue South. This is Cecilia Ueza, and she's, um, she's a local artist, but she's from Argentina. And I love what she does, that she makes the art really part of the, the environment. You, you drive over these murals, you walk over this to go fishing, uh, and just these vibrant colors really pop in such a way that I just really, really love it. So this is North Shore Drive, this is a fishing pier, and this is the intersection of Central Avenue and Fifth Street. Shark Tooth. This is an LA artist. Um, he did the uh, west facing wall of the State Theater. His name is Shark Tooth and he paints sharks. That is his sort of graffiti um, tag style. And he did this one in 2015 and I just, um, think it's really wonderful. And then around the corner, you can see a little bit of this mural called State Lines. It was one of the earliest murals um, from 2012. This is predates Shine by Tess One and Pale Horse, two local artists. Um, Tess One is one of the um, artists who really had the idea to create the Shine Mural Festival and brought it to the city officials um, who agreed to sponsor it. Then we see next to it, that, so this mural is now gone um, as of recently. They, they, they renovated the state theater. They found all sorts of problems with the back wall and had to rebuild this wall. And so Pale Horse, who, who, who had an original, um, you can see on the left-hand side, Pale Horse's original mural. Then he came back with um, this wonderful Eastern-influenced um, giant mural to cover the back. So I'm gonna show now some before and after murals in the same locations because <clears throat> that's something that happens. So here are, here are two pictures of the same wall. This is Basque. Basque is um, really heavily involved in shine each year and since the beginning and especially this year. In 2015, he painted this, um, this word and image on the left and then 
in 2018 with Basque's permission. It was painted over by Becky Bukes, who is also a local artist. She's based, I think, out of Tampa um, to do this gorgeous skeletal, very, really, I love this mural. Um, so they're the same location on First Avenue North where Green Bench Brewery meets Red Mesa Mercado. <clears throat> and here's an example of the same location painted twice by the same artist. This is Yala Ford, another beloved local artist. This is the Tropicana Tunnel. Um, it's called the Sunnel. <clears throat> it covers the, um, this mural is on the exterior and also covers the inside walls and ceiling of the pedestrian tunnel between Central Avenue and First Avenue South. It's an underground tunnel that brings you from First Avenue South to Tropicana Field, so it gets lots of traffic. It was um, heavily graffitied, and so she painted over it uh, in a similar style, but a, a totally different mural in 2018, so really wonderful. All right, one of the most important things um, that Shine likes to emphasize is community engagement. <clears throat> it's a big part of the mission, um, and each year there are several local mural initiatives that bring the community into the process through what we call bright spots. So this is a 2017 bright spot. It's the 22nd Street underpass that Zulu Painter and Thirst uh, were assigned to brighten up, and here we see what they did. Um, these are a tribute to the musical past of this neighborhood and the Manh Manhattan Casino, which was part of the, quote, Chitlin circuit that brought musicians including Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, Nat King Cole, and Ella Fitzgerald to St. Petersburg. Um, African-American musicians weren't welcome to play at many white venues during the segregation years, so the Manhattan Casino was part of a network of bars, barns, dance halls, nightclubs where um, African-American musicians could perform. These um, murals depict four musicians, a trumpet player, a pianist, a guitarist, and a singer, and there are two on each side of the street. From last year, Jay Hoff and Chad Mize created a, they first imagined this mural um, that was in, uh, sort of in celebration of uh, Come Out St. Pete, and they rendered it in Legos, and then they put it onto the wall um, and they had, they did this um, with the help of uh, 27 gay, transgender, and non-binary teens from Metro Inclusive Health, Health who helped paint this. Um, it's really a wonderful outreach. I love this. Another bright spot from last year was the Royal Theater, where students came and helped paint the side of this. This is on 20, 22nd Street South. And students from Gibbs High School came and created this mural. Another thing that Shine likes to do to engage the community is brighten up the street corners around town through what we call corner canvases, which are signal boxes wrapped in vinyl that portray bold works from lo local artists um, sort of to activate the street corners. It really makes you um, notice when you're sitting in traffic and you look at. And now I wanted to show one lost mural. There are several lost murals from Shine due to the development of downtown St. Petersburg. This is from 2016 by the Inkworks crew. And now all you see is a little sliver because they put a Chase Bank in front of it. And that's the, the nature of murals. They don't last forever. And so you've got to enjoy them while we have them. So this year we are doing something different. We are partnering with, partnering with Pangea Seed Foundation um, this is a nonprofit based in Hawaii. Uh, it's an international nonprofit organization based in acting at the intersection of culture and environmentalism to further the conservation of our oceans. Uh, the Seawall's groundbreaking public art program, part of Pangea Seed, it brings the ocean into the streets around the world by collaborating with renowned contemporary artists. Seawall uses murals to foster an emotional connection to our oceans and a drive for positive actions to protect them. And this year's lineup, for the first time ever, features only Florida-based artists um, who will have an emphasis on Tampa Bay to support the local artists who make St. Pete pulse all year long. Um, the artists lineup is, is really um, the first time that we've, I mean, 
the pandemic has led us to this place where we can't really fly in the international artists that we have done the last five years. So it makes sense to um, really promote our local artists. It's really wonderful. This is the mission of Pangea Seed, Science, Education, and Artivism, or C. Um, sea Walls brings um, murals to coastal communities, and they've done 400 murals in 17 countries. Uh, employing 275 plus artists. Here's a map of where you can find Seawall's projects. Um, they put these murals in coastal communities that address the pressing environmental issues that the oceans are facing, but specifically the murals in each location are specific to the issues there. So what, we, what we're going to see this year are things that relate specifically to what we deal with such as algae blooms, manatees, um, plastic pollution that we see around our beaches here. <clears throat> we partnered with Pangea Seed for the first time last year on two murals, or no, one mural. Two were sponsored by the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. This is uh, Blaine Fontana and Plastic Birdie. This is the largest mural from last year. And um, it's like a page, it's supposed to be a page out of a science textbook. Um, serves as one-of-a-kind hyper-local information graphic system highlighting the importance, struggle, and historical relevance of local Florida Gulf fishing communities in a time when industrial fishing is depleting our oceans. They used information from NOAA from, for fishery locations in detail about the f specific Florida fishes we see here. And this is the Vitali Brothers, also from last year, funded by NOAA at 20th Street South, it's called Bait and Switch. And so let's dive in, oh, pardon the pun, to, <laughs> to uh, this year's artists and, and talk about what we're going to see. We're calling it Seawalls St. Petersburg. First up, Alex Giannis, we've had him um, with Shine before, he's coming back, he's a Miami-based artist. Um, kind of rooted in skateboard culture. He has you know, exhibited all around the world. He's uh, worked with Adidas, Red Bull, Sony, and Vans. He's gonna be at the St. Petersburg Museum of History, and his topic is sea level rise. Basque, once again, he's back. His topic is to be determined as of this lecture, and he will bring to life this rather sort of dismal wall that's Widener Law on Mirror Lake Drive. I can't wait to see how he brings that to life. Brian Butler, also a Miami artist, is going to do a mural um, on ocean acidification at the Move Dispensary on First Ave North. And really wanted to show the before walls. Um, that's important to me it's because they're just going to be really wonderful after about a week and a half. Uh, let's see. El LeBlanc is a local to St. Petersburg. She's going to um, take on this giant wall on the side of Brick Street Farms, which is near the Warehouse Arts District on 3rd Ave South, with her topic as plastic pollution. Another St. Petersburg artist named I Bombs is going to um, do a mural on the side of this new construction called the Grand Central Brew House, which also has a, a non-shine mural on the other side by Carrie Jadis that faces the dog bar. It's beautiful. Um, his topic will be algae blooms. Kenny Coyle with Mike Berenger will uh, address coastal wetlands and mangroves on the backside of USF Harbor Hall, which is incidentally the former site of the Dali Museum, 1000 Third Street South. Um, they're both USF graduates, Kenny and Mark. Lily Yuan from Jacksonville will um, do a, this is photorealistic painting that she will, um, this is not exactly what she will do, but um, they're hyperreal paintings inspired by the dichotomy of Eastern and Western cultures. She's originally from China and she uses her natural proficiency for art to kind of explore contrasting viewpoints and she's going to do watercolor, water quality. Artistry St. Pete is a, a, a new um, condo building that is focusing on bringing lots of local artists in, and and um, I can't wait to see this one on Central Avenue. Mason Schwack, uh, 
I hope I said that correctly, from St. Petersburg, will uh, address species at risk on Third Street South, just a little bit further down from the Harbor Hall. Um, we will see Nika Jones with Bianca Burroughs do a, the side of the wall uh, Goodyear rubber, and her topic will be overfishing. You may recognize this image. Um, this was recently the cover of Time Magazine. Um, it's, she's really best known for her highly detailed embroidery work. Uh, she's also an accomplished painter, photographer, and mixed media artist. She's from Trinidad and Tobago, um, based out of Tampa. Tatiana Suarez from Miami will paint a side of the sailing center uh, on manatees and mangroves. And I just love her sort of pop surrealist style. Really ethereal, feminine creatures bringing to life there. Let's see. And then um, we're going to move into some of the bright spots for this year. Uh, a local artist named Chris Roberts, who's known as Brainstorm, um, he's a, a, a local painter, designer, and tattoo artist. He owns Urban Ink Tattoo Company. And this is sponsored by NOAA Fisheries. And he will be partnering with the St. Pete Youth Farm. I think that's out of the Enoch Davis um, Recreation Center. And they're going to create a mural focused on diversity and inclusion in the STEM professions mm -hmm. on this long wall um, opposite the library on the Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital campus. Okay. Uh, the Happy Mural Project. This is going on the side. It's happening right now. So if you would like to go and see a mural um, being painted live or volunteer to be a part of it, uh, it's down off of 30, 31st Street South. And um, this is Alyssa Marie and Braden Everly and their husband and wife duo who are going around town painting just really cheerful um, murals to sort of elevate the mood and sort of a trying time. Um, she is doing a color by number, so it's easy for you to jump in and help paint this. And then there's going to be um, sort of an interactive um, part of this year, which is um, the Glazer Vision Foundation um, has committed to providing glasses for all children uh, ending a silent vision crisis, where one in four children are affected by vision impairment and one in five cannot afford eye care. These supersized glasses are a way that the foundation supports vision through art. So you're going to go and, and um, take your selfie and you're going to tag one share, one pair. The foundation will then provide a free eye exam and a pair of prescription glasses to a local child in need. Here's the map for these this year's um, 11 murals that will be um, going up starting this coming Saturday. And then I made a sort of a sub map showing the topics where you can find each topic uh, along this map. I'm, I wanted to emphasize the fact that Shine does have a COVID plan in place. This includes um, everyone needs to wear a mask. No one, really, only the artist can take off their masks if they're alone and painting. Um, they are going to demarcate a safe zone around their um, site. And really, we're limiting the volunteers. And there's also, we, we usually do a lot of really wonderful events. We're limiting the amount of events we're doing this year. One of the best ways to see all of the Shine murals is through this app called Pixel Sticks. And on each of the Shine murals, there's this little black plaque to the side that uh, within it carries the technology that you can tap your phone, and it brings up um, an audio guide, which um, is narrated by Eugenie Bondurant. So you sort of are able to get a docent tour of each of the Shine murals. You can do this from the comfort of your car, should you not want to get out uh, into the heat or other weather. Um, and there's a lot I could tell you about this, but for time, I'm going to move on to the events that are going to um, be held on 11.5, which is day after tomorrow. There's going to be a panel on um, environmental justice, advocacy through art. Uh, there's always um, a series of bike tours that happen every year in, con in connection with Shine. These do fill up quickly, so if you'd like to take a, a guided bike tour around town, please visit the Shine website and sign up. 
And then there's the really, the main event, one of the only public events we're doing is a, um, a beach cleanup on, in Lassing Park, Clean It Up 2020. It's gonna be 9 a.m. two Saturdays from now. This is a little flyer for the panel on Friday. And with that, I say thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure to speak about Shine this year. Thank you. Yes, sir. You let your children draw on the wall. It's not so much letting, <laughs> but I discover drawings mostly in Sharpie. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, what kind of funds are available for artists to make murals? So the artists are paid. Um, not quite a lot. They're, they're given a stipend of a thousand or so dollars, uh, and that's much less than they usually make. Um, these are, you know, these internationally acclaimed mural artists. So in exchange for that, we give them a pristine wall. This mostly doesn't have windows. It's pre-prepped, pre-painted to however they want. So they, we make it as easy as possible for them. We also feed them. We bring them treats throughout the week um, and really, really make them feel like rock stars so that they can accept the lower payment. Um, Shine is funded by the city of St. Petersburg, and, but uh, I think it's like $25,000 a year. However, they raise four times that amount uh, through pri private funding each year. So last year, uh, Shine raised $130,000 to help put on the festival. So the city gives only $25,000? That's correct. And then how are artists there's a call for artists internationally, uh, just as there is a call for walls, and we always get more than we can use each year. So there is a curation committee with Shine. There's an events committee. Um, the curation committee um, is comprised of, um, obviously, the administration, Janae, and um, some local artists. Chad Mize is on the curation committee, and they, they really look at um, diversifying the styles and techniques so that Every, every, you know, there's a unique blend of, um, of different kinds of um, murals each year. Um, so this year, the, the Florida, we can, every year, local artists are like, why don't you include us more? Um, because we, we really, the focus is bringing in this international talent. So we're thrilled that we can finally tap into the local talent. Anything else? Yes, Yvonne. I do not know, but I think that the city's do, the city does not own the murals. I would say that it's more um, the artists can reproduce what they'd like to do. No, there's not a five-year list. There's there's a large amount of walls that people that business owners want to have a shine wall because it drives businesses, it drives traffic to their businesses. Um, what that list looks like every year, I think that it's it. While, while there is a large list, there's only a small amount of walls that are usable. So I think that we and there's usually 20 walls per year. This year it's greatly reduced because of the pandemic. Um, but I think that. If we can't use a particular wall one year, it's, it's not a perfect match for a certain artist, then we do try to roll that over. Mm -hmm. Is there a fund to maintain? No, there's not a fund to maintain, but the, but the, um, the building owners do contribute to Shine to have the mural put onto their wall. They help support that, that project. Mm -hmm. I don't know of the long-term plan, but I think we're going to do it as long as possible until we run out of walls. We're really trying to center it around the downtown area, but we're, we're finding that we're running out of downtown walls, and so it's starting to spread out a bit more. We're seeing some, you know, they spread out to the Pinellas Trail. There are murals along there. Um, we're going a little bit more to the south side. 
And I imagine that eventually it will go west down Central Avenue. Maybe, I mean, if we could jump over 34th Street, there's a bunch of great walls out there. So we'll see. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Great.